Uh, we're in the series of messages this summer. Uh, the, the fruit of the Spirit is found in Galatians chapter 5. Of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. I don't know what the rest are because today we get to peace. <laughs> and uh, um, that means next week I've got patience. So ah, this, I've got to learn and learn and grow in this series. So um, anyway, I... Uh, I was thinking about what is it that makes peace a, a difficult thing in, in my life, and it's usually that I don't have a very good perspective about things, and so I see things the way I do, and then I get all agitated and upset or try and control things. And, and I was thinking last night, we were at uh, Christina and Chris's uh, house for the 4th of July party, and um, which was great, thanks for inviting us, and uh, I saw uh, the, the most vivid illustration of perspective and, the, and how difficult it can be if we don't have it. Um, there were a bunch of people out in, out in front blowing up stuff, you know, that's what they, and uh, I was going to say kids were doing it, but actually, no, it was a lot of the adults were blowing up stuff. It was, it was uh, and uh, we're doing okay, and everything's going along, and except that there were these three dogs that people brought, and, uh, and so the dogs were getting kind of uh, agitated, excited, and um, not in a happy way. And, uh, and so uh, Christine decided, let's put all the dogs, let's lock them in the house, and then they'll be okay, right? <laughs> so, and so we're out, you know, and I'm flipping things on the grill, and, and, uh, and stuff's blowing up all over the place. And, um, and all of a sudden, this dog breaks out of the house, comes ripping around the side like crazy. And panicky and runs down the street and then pretty soon there's another one and they're coming around and, and then and then good-hearted people at the party are running down the street trying to come back here come back you know and then the third dog goes and uh, and Christine's going I don't know how they got out I don't know how they got out there's no way they got out. And, and I thought about that I thought you know that's kind of what happens to me in my life I'm like those dogs in that uh, I'm going along and everything's okay but then I start hearing stuff stuff starts blowing up all around me emotionally or physically or whatever. And from my perspective, this is really anxiety producing. And I do what I think I can do, which is usually panic, <laughs> you know, run crazy for a while, while, while good-hearted people like you are chasing me down, but it's all right, John, come back, Pastor, you know, that sort of thing. And, uh, and I thought, if those dogs only had the perspective that we had, we would know it wasn't a threat, it wasn't a danger, it was just some people being stupid and blowing stuff up, right? I'm not saying they were stupid on these, <laughs> yeah, they were. And, uh, and then I thought, well, okay, so as a kid, what did I learn that makes me uh, lose perspective? And I thought, well, when I was a kid, I, I got farmed off, me and my brothers and sister got farmed off to Grandma Ruth's house for Fourth of July weekend while my parents went away, and um, and we had smuggled in uh, firecrackers from Tijuana. Oh. <laughs> you know, when, when you're a kid in San Diego and Fourth of July is coming, you, that's what you do. It's like going to Snohomish if you live here. And so uh, we had we had stashed firecrackers everywhere. And so that night came, and my grandmother Ruth uh, was doing what she does every night, and as she's watching a Morris Welk show <laughs> in the living room, and. I took this as an opportunity for us to go out and start blowing stuff up. But you know, when you're blowing stuff up in the yard, it's not really as impactful. And I found that if you light the firecrackers off a piece of metal, it resonates and, and things go higher and things are louder and everything. And so we're doing that for about a half hour, an hour or so, having a great time. And, um, and then the neighbor comes running out, yelling about something about lighting firecrackers on the hood of his car. <laughs> and I, at that moment, I realized I lacked perspective. <laughs> to me, it was just a really cool place to light them off because it was metal and shiny and stuff. And so he had this new, I think it was a, like a 63 Chevy Impala, you know, with a big hood, and a lot of, a lot of room for blowing stuff up. Anyway, so uh, my punishment that night was, uh, I Dragged us all in and we had to sit with her on the couch and watch Lawrence Well. <laughs> and then she had to end up paying for a new paint job and I guess car and everything. But um, but I thought, you know, I didn't have the perspective. I thought this was just cool. This was great. And I missed the whole point that I'm destroying the guy's new Chevy Impala. 
uh, which deserved to be destroyed. But um, <laughs> and so, when I think about peace and the Bible continually encouraging us to peace, um, one of the passages that came to mind for me uh, was one that, that uh, Susie Weber shared with us many, many times. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends our understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Then it says this, finally, finally, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, I look at this and I go, okay, in the Bible there's two different things. One is that if we find ourselves in a situation where we don't have the ability to handle it, we can't manage it, we can't control it, it's, it's out of control for us, it's beyond our deal. My natural inclination is to say, well, forget that, I can do that, I can control this, I can make this, I can make this happen, and then my anxiety goes up, and my tension goes up, and my stress goes up because I'm trying to control it. That's when it says, don't do that. Instead, present it to the Lord with thanksgiving, prayer, and, and let um, the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let it, have, let it have authority and sway in your heart. That's when God takes over. But then there's some things that we can do, right? And you notice there's a tension uh, sometimes. We, we get this wherever I say, you know, you need to let go and let God do stuff, you know, then, then people go, well, yeah, but we've got some responsibility, right? There's some things we can do, and that's true. And so when you have some things you can do, like, for example, he says, you know, think about this. Fill your mind with this, what's noble, what's, what's uh, right, what's true. Uh, what's pure, what, you know, think about these things. Let your mind feed on those things, which is something you can do. And if you do that, um, you don't get the peace of God. What, is, what do you get? It says, um, the God of peace will rule in your hearts. Now, when there's something we can't do, we get the peace of God. When there's things we can do, we end up needing the God of peace. And, and I think there's a little difference in that because um, I spent time, you know, uh, trying to get peaceful in my life. And, and I tend to be, you know, I'm ADHD and I tend to be agitated. And so um, uh, Damien would always give me little books to read. Uh, <laughs> Never give people books to read when they've got problems. That's, that's so bad. But anyway, he would always give me like, you know, Thich Nhat Hanh's book on anger, you know, and uh, so you should have mindful thinking. Well, what other kind of thinking is there? You know, not got it. If you can't have mindful thinking, you know, or, or mindful, and you know, he's talking about how you, you know, handle your anger, and I'd read it, and go, I know he's right, but uh, I'm not that peaceful, you know? And, I, and so then I realized, you know, well, maybe you know, what we should do to get peace is we should stop talking with people. <laughs> My gosh, have you realized that, that so much of our problems have to do with other people? I, I, maybe not you, I, not you guys at all, really. But, you know, I mean, there's people you talk to and then they, they, it creates issues for you and then you're trying to get in love with them. And so it's easier to just pull away, right, and, and not in relationships with people, just kind of isolate. I find that if you're isolated, they can't bug you as much. But you know what happens to me when I'm isolated? I'm with this guy I can't stand. Me. It's the weirdest thing. It's like I follow myself into the isolation. So no matter how uh, much we try and pull away and make our life peaceful, it never really results in that. Maybe what we should do is get remember those old days they used to have those sensory deprivation tanks? 
We should get a spiritual sensory deprivation tank where we just lay in it and we don't hear anything, we don't feel anything, we don't think anything. Oh wait, that would be called a coffin. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Oh. I almost had it, I almost had it. So, how do we have aggressive peace? How do we have peace that's not just getting passive, not just pulling away, not just withdrawing, not just getting uh, disengaged, but actually peace in the midst of moving towards, in, in, uh, in part of uh, people's lives and issues and, uh, and involved in this world, and not feeling like we have to isolate to protect ourselves or control it? How do we have that kind of aggressive um, peace? Well, um, I think it starts with realizing that there's no way we can have peace by trying to control it and control our lives. It's not happening. Now, there's some things you can control. We talked about that, right? So um, if, if you thought it was you know, too hot in here, you could probably get up and look around the church somewhere and find a fan and bring it in and turn it on, right? Almost all of you can do that, right? You'd be able to do that or turn off the spotlights and cool things down. But there's some things you really can't do. Um, no matter how much you want to, you can't control it. Right? You know what those things are for you? Uh, well, first I'll give you an example. We'll do a little test here. Um, 20 bucks. Oh, what the heck? Let's go 40. 40 bucks. I'll give 40 bucks to somebody if they would be able to do this. Okay? Let's just you, shoot Jonathan. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> You're a smart guy, right? One with hope. <laughs> You're able to handle a lot of things, right? He handles stress and stuff. He's pretty good. You're actually good training. <laughs> Don't make me look for someone else at this point. Okay, so I've got this. We're talking about withdrawing and those little thing. Uh, with her. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to give you this 40 bucks if you just do something real simple. All right. Okay? All right. All right. You want to do it? You want to try it for everybody? Okay. Okay. 40 bucks for you. All right. Um, I'm not kidding. <laughs> just dilate your pupils. I'll watch. Okay. Thank you. You can do that. Just get control. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, try it. I got 40 bucks for you now. All you have to do is just dilate your pupils. Come on, here. I'll watch it. Can't. You know, they're kind of the same. Like, I wanted to give this to him. Oh, man, I really wanted to. I should anyway, right? No. We're not, no. He can't even do something like dilate his pupil. You would have no control? My goodness. Well, see, the thing is, it's okay to not have control about everything. That's what this scripture is so important to us. Because it's not saying, if you want to have peace in your life, manage it better. That's what I was always told. If you just get it together, you'd have more peace. And I just assumed, well, I just wasn't very good at getting things together, which is true. But the Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Anything that we can't control. With prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which you're not going to understand, is going to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's all right to admit that we don't have control. It's all right to admit that we can't make stuff happen. It's all right to admit that we don't have a perspective that we can understand what's going on all the time. That is so all right. Because God saying, I'll give you my peace. You don't have it, I'll give you my peace. It's for you. When you feel out of control, when you feel unable to handle what's going on around you, I'll give you my peace. If you take it. And in the meantime, there's a lot of things you can do. You can start feeding your mind on, what's it say? Stuff that's true and noble and right and pure and lovely and admirable and excellent and praiseworthy. Think about these things. Set your mind on that. Practice. You can do that. 
And in doing that, you're going to meet the God of peace. Well, I think I spent a lot of time in my life looking for peace and not necessarily wanting the God of peace. But I realize now you don't really ever get peace without the Lord. That's when we say yes to him and we invite Jesus into our lives and we say, okay, Lord, you can have control of my life. I need you to because I obviously am not doing real well at it. I need you to take control of this area or help me in this problem or this relationship and make a difference here. And, and Lord, could you loan me some of your peace? Because uh, I'm a little turbulent. You know, that's a fair prayer. That's a fair prayer. And, and when we do that, it opens us up to a relationship with the God of peace who wants to love us and wants to care for us and it doesn't want us to feel like we're out of control all the time and, and uh, struggling to pull it together and uh, all those things. He wants us to have a great life. He wants us to have a life that, that uh, is abundant and full and has joy in it and we're surprised at the at grace when it comes around and and that's the kind of life he wants us to have. And, and he doesn't want us to have a, a spiritual sensory deprivation tomb coffin that we're laying in going, okay, oh, I'm really living now. I'm not feeling anything, you know. That's not living. Not living at all. Now, Jesus says, uh, I think it's John 15, um, my peace I give to you. Not like the world gives. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be afraid. I think it's time for us to say, Lord, I need your peace. I'm open to it. Maybe I haven't been before, but I am now. I need you to come into my life, into me, into my situations, and bring your peace to me. Because it's something I can't, like dilating my own pupils, I can't do it. I can't make this happen. 